so let me uh, before i start let me come uh, start with uh, or before i continue with our main topic let me finish a few things on the moments and uh, so we talked about characteristic functions and uh, we also will uh, uh, there are also something called moment generating functions uh, they are all related but uh, we'll just for the sake of completeness so this is what the characteristic sake of completeness i'll just uh, touch over everything characteristic functions is what we <coughs> have defined as expected value of e raised to j omega x remember x is the random variable so this uh, reads e raised to j omega x f x x d x. So you can see if f x x is a function, then this is the Fourier transform of the of the density function. On the other hand, moment generating function, uh, people use different symbols. It is simply expected value of e raised to s x. So notice the difference between these two. So in one case you have s here you have j omega so you can see uh, so if you write the expansion then it will become even a little more clearer e raised to sx fx x dx so those of you remember your laplace transform will see that this is actually ms is the laplace transform of the density function whereas uh, the characteristic function is the uh, a Fourier transform of the density function. So they both are related. It's one and the same thing. In one case, we use the variable j omega. Here we use the complex variable s. S c is sigma plus j omega. Or so, except uh, you have to carry around the j here, whereas this is a little bit neater. So it's one and the same thing. You just have to do the. So of course, if you in the moment generating function. If you replace s by j omega, of course you get the characteristic function. So, uh, so if you look into the book, I think I uh, I have derived the I am uh, moment generating function for uh, uh, different variables. For example, if you remember, if x is uh, normal with the mean mu and variance sigma squared, we derived the characteristic function to be e raised to j omega. Uh, mu minus half sigma squared omega squared. So the moment generating function, if you work out, it will come out to be, remember, j omega uh, j omega will get replaced by s, uh, that's all. So j, j, here you have minus omega squared is s squared, so this is plus half s squared sigma squared. That's all. So it's one, whatever we you want to do with one, and if you want to get the moments here, here, remember, this is e to the power j s x. So if you take keep taking the derivative with respect to s, let's do the derivative with respect to s once. So this will come expected value of uh, x multiplied by e raised to s x. Now if you put s equal to 0, you can see you will get expected value of x. You will get the mean. So you just take the derivative with respect to s, that's all. In the other, in the uh, for the characteristic function, we have to take the derivative with respect to omega. Then you divide to divide by uh, j, etc. Here there is no division. You just put x s equal to zero. See, you put uh, you take the derivative one more time. So I I hope you can see that if you take the derivative of the moment generating function n times, so you will get expected value of x n e raised to s x. Every time you'll keep adding s. Now we put s equal to zero, s equal to zero, this goes to one. So you get, so this is another way to get the moment generating function. For the discrete random variables, I should talk about that also. Uh, you can of course use the characteristic function or you can use the discrete moment generating function, which is actually used uh, using a, a different uh, symbol. So it is e to the power, zx so this is the 
discrete. Uh, so you can see here, E raised to S is being replaced by Z if you want to see the connection. Remember, look at the moment generating function. If you replace E raised to S by Z, then this becomes Z to the power X. So for the discrete random variable, of course, this is by definition, this is Z to the power K probability of X equal to K, right? Over K, different K. So how, how do you find the mean and variance from the discrete, fun, uh, discrete random variable? So I'm sorry, the discrete moment generating function. We have uh, P of Z is e to the power zx. So this is sigma z to the power k probability of x equal to k. Remember z is only here. So let me take the derivative with respect to z. Uh, then you notice, so I'm going to write this as p prime z. So notice this will become sigma k multiplied by zk minus one probability of x equal to k. Now let me put z equal to one, then this is gone. So p prime evaluated at one is simply, remember this is gone, that becomes one. This is k p to the power uh, p x k, but this is nothing but the expected value of x. So if you have the discrete, remember don't put zero here, here you put z equal to one. Let me go back to this expression and take the derivative again with respect to z. Remember derivative is here so this will become k multiplied by k minus 1 multiplied by probability of uh, x equal to k now we put z equal to 1 so you get double if you put z equal to 1 you get k multiplied by k minus 1 multiplied by probability of x equal to k but as you can see, this is g of x. So this is the expected value of x multiplied by x minus one. If I expand it, you get expected value of x squared minus expected value of x. But expected value of x is already here. So if you put it together, so we, remember we have expected value, this is expected value of x. Uh, if you take the double derivative and put one, you get expected value of x squared minus expected value of x. So you get the second derivative is expected, uh, second derivative of one, look at here, plus first derivative of p. So then the variance is, variance of x will be expected value of x squared minus, uh, this is your mu, uh, mu right? minus mu squared, etc. So you can, let me do an example maybe on this. So let's say x is uh, a geometric with parameter p. So x is geometric with parameter p. So that's a discrete random variable, probability of x equal to k. Remember, this is the probability of getting the first uh, uh, head in k tosser, so that is p q to the power uh, after k tosser, p q to the power k, k equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So let's find the moment generating function that is summation z k probability of x equal to k. So that's summation p z q to the power k k equal to zero through infinity. So that is p over one minus uh, qz. Now a p you can pull outside, right? So you need to know all this uh, simple simplifications. Now you take the derivative with respect to z. So the p prime z is v du. How do you do this? Uh, so it's just simply minus Is this correct? Anybody? Did I do it correctly? Yes or no? Uh, professor? 
Yeah. Uh, wouldn't you want to start from one, the index from one for a geometric series or a geometric variable? Because you would have to do at least one trial, no? So here I start, if it is one, then this will be K minus one. It's the same thing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. Remember, right. so you can write it two different ways. You can put it here K minus one, then this will start from one, two, three, etc. Yeah. Okay. So some people use the, so either way, both the cases, the answers will be different. So you need to do it correctly. Yeah. Only if I did this correctly from here, P prime Z, which is the uh, P prime evaluated at one would be what? So Z equal to one, one minus Q is P, P squared in the denominator. So you get Q over P. That's the correct answer. So you, now you do the second derivative, right? Second derivative is what? Uh, minus two PQ over one minus QZ to the power three multiplied by minus Q. Is that correct? So this is going to be, I hope it is correct. So one minus Q again, P prime well, P double prime one is going to be one minus Q is a P, P cubed. And so we have uh, minus minus, so you have two Q squared over P squared. All right, then you use this previous formula, okay? Then you can use this uh, formula. So I guess you can do it, right? I'm going to leave it here. All right, now uh, somebody asked me the question, what do you do with the me at these different moments? So as I said, the moments are, So you have the density function. As I said, this is uh, a lot of times we don't want to deal with the delta, delta function. So we may deal with uh, uh, some, uh, some of the uh, parameters. Sigma squared is x squared bar minus x bar squared. Uh, so usually just deal with mean and variance versus this. So this is just a crude approximation To PDF. So what we are trying, so mean is some number here and variance is, you know, uh, this is what the sigma is representing, some spread of the density function. So we use, this is parametric representation. We use two parameters to talk about the random variable, nothing more. Uh, I hope you, uh, I'm clear to you. Remember, someone asked me the question. So this is why, so question was, what do you do with the moments? So the moments are used to get an idea about the density function. If you don't have the density function or you don't want to carry the density function everywhere. What is the temperature? What is the characterization of the temperature today? You don't want to start drawing the PDF. First of all, we don't even have the data to draw the PDF. So we can say temperature is 70 degrees. That's the average value. But the fluctuation happens to be what about two degrees or 10 degrees. That will give you an idea about the variance. That's all. We so usually two parameters, are, how is the stock market today? Oh, the mean value is uh, 28,000. But today there was a lot of fluctuation. Uh, no, I mean, let's say minus uh, 400 to, so a lot of variance, maybe a lot of stocks we know went up and down. Whereas you say hardly it moved. That means the variance today is zero. So that's sort of the, any other questions? Yeah, ask them. Ask them, ask that uh, lady whether the question, ask her whether the uh, answered or satisfactory. Yeah, yeah. 
otherwise uh, let me move, move on to the main topic of this uh, the first half two random variables so this is uh, so, so the next three classes or two or three classes including today uh, so we'll be done with the probability in three more classes but these are the most important classes there is a lot of work for you to do go home and i have probably 50 to 100 videos on today's and next week's topic just to solving problems so we are going to bring in one more remember we studied about one random variable so as the title says i'm going to bring in one more random variable or two more or three more or n random variables i'll start with two then you will see that whatever i am doing we can do the same thing to extend it to multiple random variables. usually the data is not about one random variable right when you when something is measured your height your weight your blood pressure a lot of things are uh, you know, the doctor wants to study all this together right so if you let us consider two random variables x and y for each we have the distribution function which is we know what it is the set of all realizations such that x of psi is less than or equal to x and its a derivative of that distribution function is the density function Uh, density function is the area under that is one. So we studied all this about one random variable, right? And uh, you have the mean value va as a variance, etc. And similarly, you have a, uh, a, a, dense, a random variable y. Its characterization is using its distribution function or uh, density function. And f y y is the derivative of the distribution function of y and so the area under the density function is one and uh, we also know that if you square the random variable or uh, take a function of x how to find the density function of y etc and uh, i mean so these are characterization of x and y separately so it, it becomes natural like height and weight when uh, you feel two random variables are related how do you characterize them together so that's where the joint characterization of two random variables comes in that's what we are going to do today professor yeah uh, for x you have the partial derivative with respect to x but then for y you have the total derivative yeah that was that was a mistake that's good it's just a, okay. there is a partially is the same as ordinary is that what you said this one yeah 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 i should have written just the ordinary derivative right okay uh, very good good point right so remember uh, whatever you see on this sheet we have studied and we studied actually a little more so what we want to do is how do you characterize uh, how to characterize x and y together because the joint characterization obviously must have something more than the uh, separate characterization so, so if you just tell me about the weight that's of course some information and if you tell me about the height separately, that's also some information. But you can see when you put it together, it's a little more relevant, right? If you say the weight is 200 pounds, that sounds uh, high. But if you say the height happens to be six feet and three inches, then it is not that bad, right? And so on. So, uh, so the you can see the second variable seems to have. There are a lot of situations where something else seems to have and influence and so question is how do you characterize them together so we'll do the natural extension of uh, what we have done so far look at the way we have uh, so remember so a lot of phenomena are going on we want to copy uh, we want to uh, transform under x uh, uh, 
the uh, it comes to some values and under y it comes to certain values y1 etc that's the you know so what we could say is uh, if i take some value here and if i take some value here what is the probability of uh, what are the events that has been let's say mapped before this event in other words exactly the same in this manner so let me write it down then i'll so if you consider this set where x of psi is less than or equal to x and y of psi is less than or equal to y this is an event why is this an event we are saying if x is somewhere here what are the events which has been mapped before that point and if y is here what are the events which has been mapped before that look at so we want them to be mapped together so if you if you look at this uh, let me put it this way so this event has been mapped here here so if i take my x and y here then you see that this uh, set at least has one entry so we want to consider a co a compute to this event and then we want to assign a probability to this event because this depends on x and y as before we'll call it the joint distribution function of x and y <coughs> So join this. So look at once again before you proceed too much. Look at the similarity. Here, this is the set of all realizations which has been mapped before x. That's the distribution function. Here, the set of all realizations which has been mapped before x and before y together. So I'll rewrite this in the next page. So the probability of uh, the set of all realizations such that x of psi is less than or equal to x. This is one event, intersection of uh, y of psi less than or equal to y. This is what I'm going to call fxy x comma y. So let me talk about the notation. Don't write, these are the random variables, the address. These are the x and y values. So x value here, some y value here on the x and y angles. So again, this being a probability, this is a non-negative function. Can you move the paper down a bit? Thanks. So I'm going to show as before that this is also a non-decreasing function uh, with its uh, starting from zero and going up to plus one start up uh, zero is uh, e easy let's put all the fx y minus infinity comma minus infinity if you put minus infinity remember it's uh, this is as before this is the null set so this probability is zero what happens if i put both the plus uh, plus infinity plus infinity this means set of all realizations which has been mapped before plus infinity, that is the whole set. This is the whole set. So that becomes one. So this is easy. So what? let's see what happens here if I, or before I do that, let me also show this is a non-decreasing function. So the way I go, I'm going to show it is, uh, I'll show for each variable. Let me take x2 greater than x1. I am going to, uh, so let's look at, uh, this of course I can write it like this as we have done with one variable. This is true, right? Because x1 is here, x2 is here. So this whole thing is the union of this and uh, this. Uh, no, uh, the union, right? Uh, the, these two are mutually as, uh, exclusive. Right? Now I am going to uh, intersect with the B here. Uh, intersect with the B. So it will be intersect with the B here, intersect with B here. And B is going to be Y less than or equal to Y, let's say. So notice uh, I, what I have here is X less than or equal to X2. Intersection with y less than or equal to y is equal to x less than or equal to x1 
intersection with y less than or equal to y union with x between x1 and x2 intersection with y less than or equal to y so let's take remember these two are mutually exclusive so let's take the probability i'll write it here probability of this is the probability of this a union becomes plus simply because these two are mutually exclusive so uh, but the, look at the left side this is the distribution function of xy evaluated at x2 comma y this is the distribution joint distribution of x, uh, at uh, x1 here right x1 comma y plus this is some probability probability of x between x1 and x2 and y less than y but whatever it is this this set this probability is non zero so you can see if x2 is greater than x1 then this quantity must be greater than this one so it's a, so it's the same thing you can do on the y axis so we have uh, so we have f of xy x2 comma y a for any y is greater than fxy x1 comma y i just proved because the right side is this plus some positive quantity so this quantity minus this quantity is equal to this quantity which is non negative so this quantity is greater than this so you can imagine how the function goes as x increases the function increases or stays the same it can stay the same or it can jump up but it cannot go down because of this property so again uh, as before it is uh, right continuous on both the variables so it sort of goes up or stays the same or then goes up but at infinity if you look at the function it's all it is plus 1 because we at both the infinities what happens if you put only one variable to infinity so remember i need this the last relation so i'm just going to take it to next page and maybe we'll finish up something so from what i wrote there look at this we have this property so what i did was in the last expression look at the last expression i brought this term to the other side so i have probable i have that expression now i am going to do uh, so let me call this to be a i don't want to keep writing that so let me write this relation y less than y2 of course is y less than y1 a mutually exclusive union of y greater than y1 less than y2 right so you have y1 here y2 here all i am saying is this whole thing is equal to union of this and uh, the other portion and uh, this portion so the red and black together gives you the green right all right now you uh, so that that's uh, identity is true let me do an intersection with a here this is a so a here a here so let me then let me take the probability so i'm going to write it here probability of uh, a is what a i'm going to substitute x1 x less than x1 here you have y less than y2 equal to probability of x less than x1 x less than x2 y less than y1 uh, so this is mutually exclusive so the probability of the union is the sum of the probabilities plus ab a is x being between x1 and x2 and y between y1 and y2 so this is the term we are interested in so let me remember each of this i can plug in this expression look at that expression that's this you replace y by y2 for this expression same thing for this expression you uh, same expression you replace y by y1 here you replace y by y2 and here you replace y by y1 so you will get to four terms 
and we can compute this expression. So this is a useful identity. We are asking in the two dimension, what if you have two random variables, what is the probability that the weight will be between 150 and 160, x1 and x2, and at the same time, the height will be between 5.4 and 5.8, let's say something of that. So this is, I'm going to substitute this. You can do it uh, with me, see whether, so it will come, come you can compute this from the uh, distribution function expression. So this is one usefulness of the distribution function. That uh, two, two minus terms and two plus terms. So again, the way I did this was uh, for this expression, you, you have this minus this with y2. And then for this expression, this expression you have same thing with the y1. Then you bring it to the other side, it will flip the signs and you have this. So what it, I'll draw a picture of this in this. So if I call, uh, remember, I don't want to keep writing this. If I call this probability to be, let's say, uh, this probability you can pictorially represent is same as asking this one, right? If I have a rectangle, we are asking, what is the probability that the random variable will be, uh, X, Y will be there. So this probability is what we are computing here. That is precisely this, look at here. X is between X1 and X2, and Y between Y1 and Y2 is you can compute it using the, uh, these four distribution functions. So what it says is, look at the distribution function. It says you compute the distribution function up to this point here. This point is X2 comma Y2. So you compute the distribution function up to here. From that, you subtract the distribution function up to here, which is, remember, x2 comma y1. This is y1, right? Then you subtract, so you subtract this out. Uh, then you subtract uh, uh, this distribution function here. That. So you, are, uh, you have, uh, this is x1 comma y2. That's the third term. But you notice that this crossed area got subtracted twice. See, so you add it back. So that's the last expression. You subtract to these two regions, then you add back that region, which is X1 comma Y1. Okay, so you can, exp uh, so this is the region FXY, X1 comma Y1, uh, up to here. So that will give you this, uh, this region, probability that the random variable will be over that region. So this is the probability. What we are computing is probability that X is between X1 and X2 and Y is between Y1 and Y2. Remember, usually that's what we are interested. What is the strength of the hurricane is it between uh, between 100 and 110 and uh, velocity and uh, something else? Uh, what is the uh, rainfall between three inches and four inches, right? At the same time. So, so the distribution, for, and that's a probability. What is the pro likelihood or probability that uh, something will happen between this bound and that bound and something else will happen between this bound and that bound? What is the probability? What is the joint probability? That joint probability of that thing happening here is given by this expression, the, uh, the expression in the last page. So I hope you understand the physical significance of it, right? So remember, if we took the distribution function, if you put plus infinity, plus infinity, you will get one. So I want to show you that the distrib joint distribution function also has all the information about the each dense distribution function. So uh, you have f x y x comma y s probability of when there is no confusion. I'll just write it like this. What this reads is a set of all realizations such that x sub x sub psi is less than or equal to x. This is intersection, and y is less than or equal to y. 
So let me put, uh, let's say, y this equal to plus infinity. Anybody, what will be this set? Y less than y means which? What is that set? Excuse me, can you pull the paper down a little bit? Thanks. So what is that set? Y less than or equal to y? Anyone? Hello. The set of all realizations which has been mapped before plus infinity. This will be what set? Anyone? If I put plus infinity here, M. Remember, this you read it like we are trying to find out all the mappings which has been mapped before plus infinity. Anyone? The whole set. The whole set, right. Remember the way it is. You, you map uh, somewhere, but everything has to be mapped. Plus infinity is all the way there. So everything gets mapped to before that. This is the whole set. Whole set intersection with this will be what? X less than set, equal set, to X. So this will be, you will see that if you put uh, fxy, x comma plus infinity will be simply x less than or equal to x. And that's equal to what? Anyone? fx of x. Yeah, so you'll get fxx. You'll get the distribution function of x. You can get it from the joint distribution like this. And similarly, if you, what happens if you put the x variable to be plus infinity? Anybody? Uh, it will be fyy. Yeah, capital FYY, that will be the distribution. So this, pro this process is called a marginal distribution function, X and Y in this context. Uh, why the word marginal, I'll show you in a second. And uh, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> and uh, once you have a function, you can take the uh, double derivative with respect to x and y, right? You have two variables. And uh, let me uh, use this notation. So the question is, what are the properties of this function? So remember, this capital F is called the joint CDF or PDF, probability distribution function, or cumulative distribution function. Now, this also, again, just using calculus, you write this as uh, x plus delta x, y plus delta y minus uh, the three terms. You can show that this is again non-negative. I showed you in the one density case, right? You do it one at a time. And uh, of course, if it is, uh, if you take the derivative to get back the distribution function, you take the integral, right? So x, y will be, I changed the variable because I used x here, y here. If I use x naught, y naught, you can put the x, y if you want. So that's the inverse relation. Now look here, let me put a plus infinity, plus infinity at the, as the upper limit. So what do you get? What is the distribution function evaluated plus infinity comma plus infinity? What? That's one. So we can call this to, this is already a non-negative function. I didn't show you, but I'm saying you do it the, remember how I showed it to be non-negative for uh, one variable? So you do it like the fx of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. This is, and put the limit delta x to be positive and goes to zero. So the, the, this is the derivative. So that's the derivative of f prime x. And we know this quantity is greater than this, so this is non-negative. That means the derivative is non-negative and the derivative is what we call fxx. That's non-negative. This is the way we did it in, for one random variable. And you can exactly do the same way, except you do it one at a time. So it's a non-negative function and the area under the function is one. So we have this property. So like, uh, so we will call this the uh, same name. So since its area is one, it's a non-negative function. We'll call this the joint density function. Yeah. 
Question is, what are its properties and so on? So remember, any function, in any two variable function with these two properties can be a density, can be a, uh, a density function. It's a, it should be non-negative and its area should be one, under it uh, should be one, uh, under the two variables. So how do we, the question, look at here. If you know the joint distribution function, we know how to get the density, uh, di uh, di distribution function of one. So question is, how do we derive a similar formula or here, look at here. So I'm going to start with this. Question is, how do we get a similar formula for the density function in terms of the density function? So look, fxx is fxy x comma plus infinity, right? We had this before. This is the distribution function. And the right side, I can write it as fxy u comma v du dv minus infinity to x minus infinity to plus infinity. Because uh, here it is plus infinity. Now I'm going to take the derivative of this to get the derivative. Derivati I, what I want is small f x. So let me take fx of x plus delta x. Then I'll subtract uh, fxx. So let me write this on. This will be minus infinity to x plus delta x. Let me call this to be gx for now. G, what is it? Gu, right? Because v goes away. So I'm going to call it gu. So gu, du. So how do you find the derivative? That's going to be fx of x plus delta x minus fxx. fxx is here. fxx is integral 0 minus infinity to x, g, uh, gu, du. This is x plus delta x. So I hope you see that this is x to x plus delta x, right? That's all. Because this is already up to x, gu, du, right? Yes or no? Just a simple calculus. And so this, of course, I, any integral in a small region, decimal region, I should be able to uh, approximate it like this, right? So let me divide by delta x. Let me divide by delta x. So this side I get gx. And uh, let me push this delta x to zero. Then this becomes the derivative of the density function. So let me, uh, there's nothing to push here. So let's look at what is gx. gx is this function with the u replaced by x. So this will turn out to be minus infinity to plus infinity uh, with uh, u replaced by x. So this is fxy x comma v dv. I'll rewrite it in the other page. All you have to concentrate is fx, the, uh, here, the left side and the right side. He is going to send you all these notes, so you don't really even have to write it down. So we look at here. If you want the distribution function uh, from the distribution function, you have this formula. But if you want the density function from the density function, you have this formula. You had v here, but that's a dummy variable, so I'm just going to write it like this. So you have the joint distribution function, you have the one uh, distrib uh, I'm sorry, the joint density function here, you have the density function of X here. So what will be the similar form? How do you, so what, what does it say? If I have the joint uh, density function, I can get the density function of X from this. How will you get FYY? Anybody? This is the way we get FXX. How will you get FYY from the joint density function? 
All right, so all you have to do is integrate it over x. So these are called marginal density functions. It's just, a, but this is of course called the joint PDF. So why the word marginal? Let me show you why I think it is best to describe using discrete cases. So if X and Y are discrete, then you have a table, right? Because probability of X equal to XI, Y equal to YJ. So I'm going to call it PIJ. So PIJ is a table here. So this is the ith row and uh, this is the jth column. So if you, according to the previous formula, look at here. If you want the density function of x, you integrate out y. Here it is summation. This is your y, this is your j, this is your x. So probability of x equal to xi is double uh, is a double a summation probability of x equal to xi comma y equal to yj over j integrate out y so this is summation pij over j but pij is here over j means you integrate over here and then you write that number here uh, let me write it as uh, uh, yes uh, uh, Remember, small p I already used here, so I'm going to write these numbers as, I have to use a different notation, SI. So this will be SI. So this will be S1, S2, etc. this way. You can use PI, but don't confuse it with this P. And similarly, if you want probability of Y equal to YJ, from the previous formula, you sum over X. So that's going to be X equal to XI y equal to yj. You sum over i means uh, you sum this uh, sum over i. Now over all the i, so you sum this way. You go this way and for rho you go this way. This is over j and the red is over i. i is this way. i is rows, j are columns. So this is simply PIJ uh, over J. And I'm going to write here, and I'm going to call it R, R, uh, R, I. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sum summating I, so I'll write it as R, J. So this will be your R, J. So look at what I'm doing. I'm going to sum it up and write the result in the marginal here, on the margin. I believe that's the reason insurance companies do this because they have the mortality or data over a couple of variables, maybe height and weight. And uh, so if you just want to bring it over one variable, you just sum it up and write it on the margin. And uh, so that's why it's called the, so X, X and Y are the marginal random variables. Right, I hope it is clear. So you, since you write it on the margin, Here and here, you call it the marginal PDFs. So let me summarize. So it's a two-dimensional function. Uh, you have x, you have y, and the function lives here. This is f x y, x comma y. It's a non-negative function. The area under the function is uh, one. And uh, we also had fxy, x comma y s minus x2 comma y2 s minus infinity to x2 minus infinity to y2 fxy x comma y. 
dx dy. So if you go back, uh, remember I had four terms like this x2 comma y1, x1 comma y1 to compute the uh, probability in this region. So if you go back and do that, uh, you will see, let me write down that result, maybe I'll write it small. So if probability of, remember this was x1, this was x2, y1 to y2. Probability that the random variable x is between x1 and x2, and y is between y1 and y2. We had, if you remember, we had uh, four expressions using the distribution functions. But e the, each first term was fx y x2 comma y2, but that is this integral from minus infinity to x2, minus infinity to y2, minus fx y x1 comma y2. That will be minus infinity to x1 and minus infinity to x2. So if you go through all this and do it, you can write this as, in terms of the density function, you can write it this way. That was the expression using distribution function. This is much neater. So all it says is you just integrate this density function over this region, whatever is its shape. So this area will give you this probability. Right, over that region you integrate. So what if that region is extremely small? Well, suppose uh, instead of x1 to x2, it is x1 to x plus, uh, x1 plus delta x. And the y is, y2 is y1 plus delta x. Then what will happen to this integral, anybody? How do you approximate an integral if it goes from x1 to x1 plus delta x? And y1 to, huh? Anyone? So what is this probability, anyone? X goes from x1 to x plus delta, and y is between y1, y1 or y2 plus delta. Of course, it's the area under this region of, of the density function, but this area can be approximated as what? Anyone? You studied, the, we, we did this for one variable. Remember, this is just the area, but first of all, if delta x is very small, that becomes like a tiny rectangle. So what's the area under that? Or oh, volume, rather. Anyone? Shouldn't it be the joint PDF evaluated at x and y times delta x times delta y? Right, because it's just the tiny area, delta x, delta y, multiplied by the height, which is fxy. So you are right. So this is going to be, F so I just want you to keep this in mind. So this is the physical meaning of the density function. So the density function, of course, if it, so if the density function happens to be high there, in a, over a small region, if you integrate this value over a cylindrical region, this will be a high number. Uh, or a tiny rectangular region, right? Everything can be, uh, if it is, uh, if, it, if you integrate it somewhere else on this region, uh, then uh, this will be, you can see this will be smaller because the function is smaller. So if you slide it, so that will give you an idea how likely the two variables are, x is going to be, x, y are going to be in this small region. So this gives you the physical significance of, uh, of course, if, the, if it is not delta x and delta y, you need to do the integration like this. If it is not delta x and delta y, you need to do the last integration. Any questions? Yeah. <clears throat> 
So we, we are looking at uh, any questions? What? Ten second what? I just asked for ten seconds to write down the top equation. That's all. You are done? Yeah. No, I am done. I'm done. You have any other question? People on Zoom, any questions? So remember, this is the joint characterization. So what we have learned so far is, if you are given fxy, you can find out fxx by integrating out uh, y. You, from here, you can also find out fyy by integrating out fx. So let me ask, ask you this. Which one has more information, the marginal density functions or the joint density function? Anyone? Which one has more information? The joint one has more information because so far from joint one, you can find the marginals. So the joint one, definitely you can get the marginal, but the point is it may have more information. So if I just give you the marginal, it's possible I cannot go back to the joint. That's the whole point. So this is uh, more information compared to Fx and Fy. <clears throat> So it tells you more than their marginal density function. So how much more we'll find out. But there is one case where the uh, information is one and the same. So that's the independent random variable. So if you say X and Y are independent, Uh, random variables, if uh, so this is like if I call this to be A, this is to be B. This is so we just use the definition of independence we studied in uh, first lecture. So we said two random variables are independent. If uh, for the whole point is uh, this is true for any x and any y. For any x and y, probability of x less than x and y less than y is the same as probability of x less than x. Uh, so, but if you look at the left side, that's joint distribution function. This side it is fxx multiplied by fyy. So we define the independence using the independence of events which we learned on lecture one. And of course let me take the double derivative here. That gives me the joint density function here on this side. And here, of course, there is no y x here. So this is just a derivative on each one of them. But that's nothing but fxx multiplied by fyy. So you can use any one of these, either this we have uh, for or this one or two for independence. You can express it in terms of the joint density function or the joint distribution function.
I hope it's not uh, one of you sitting there. So once again, two random variables are independent. If fxy, if their join density function is the product of their marginals, or the join distribution function is the product of their marginal distribution. You can use any one of them. So anybody, if I give you the join density function, how do you check independence? What will be the procedure? So given join density function, what do you do? Anyone? To check independence, what is the procedure? Compute the marginals, find fxx, you know, compute is better word, compute fxx and fyy, and then what? And see whether this, uh, so let me call this to be expression one and uh, verify one. Verify whether one is true or not. Okay, one is that expression, whether the marginal is equal to the product. So let me do an example. So if I if I if I tell you two random variables are independent, how do you find their joint density function? Anybody? I tell you that the joint variables are independent. Then their joint density function is is the product yes look at there look at the definition on line one two random variables are independent then their join density function is the product so in a problem if the problem is saying that x and y are independent then you don't need the uh, you may not uh, all uh, uh, and uh, the marginals are given that's the same as the product is the same as the distribution function so let's look at this problem Can you read what I wrote? It says the joint density function is simply kx in that region and uh, zero otherwise. Question is, are x and y independent or not? Anybody before I do it, do you have an answer? Anybody knows whether they are independent or not? Joint density function is given to you. By looking at it, is it clear to you or not clear? So what is the procedure? Yes, we just, somebody just said it. What, what should I do next? What? All right, let's compute the margin. By the way, how do you find this K here? I didn't tell you what K is. How do you find K? So let's find K first. I say the joint density function is k multiplied by x in that region. So how do you find k? What is the property we will use? Anyone? Uh, the area, the integral is equal to 1. All right, let's see whether, so this is where you need to be careful. And this, so this is good. This is, of course, this integral is over area. I purposely did something a little uh, messy. So the question is, how do you, now this should be up to you. How do you integrate it over so the function is given to be kx. So what are the limits on x and y? So let's say I'm going to integrate x first. What will be the limits on x? I'm going to integrate x first to then y. Where am I integrating x? Zero to one. All right, so that's where, so look at the problem. The density function is zero here. So there's no point in integrating from here. So the way it is, uh, 
So we are going to integrate x. X is so it depends on what the value of y is because everywhere here, if you say zero to one, zero to one, you are integrating over this square. That's not uh, that is not true. So outside integral is on y. So if you fix a y, then what will be the integration on x? Anyone? What will be the lower limits on? Look at the diagram. You only want to integrate over this uh, triangle. You don't want to integrate here and here, etc. What did you say? So what is the what is the this line is what? Anybody? It's a forty-five degree line. X y equal to x. So what will be the value of x here? What did you say? This one. What is the equation of this line? Y x equals y. All right. So what will be the limit value of x? Y. Right. Not one minus y. And what is the top limit? One. How about y? Zero to one. Zero to one. Because uh, then, so then you see, then you are only. So if you put it here, zero to one, zero to one, that's a different problem. That's what it is. So let's do this. Uh, remember, first time integrating on x. So this will be x squared by two. So this is k k x squared by two. Uh, y to one. So this is k by two goes outside. Uh, the limits are one minus y squared, right? Now I need to integrate this over y, zero to one. So that's uh, k by two half minus y cube by three, zero to one half y, right? Half is already gone outside. So just y, y minus y cube by three. So that's going to be, uh, this is one minus one third is two third. So this is K by three equal to one. So K is three, if you are with me, unless I did something wrong, right? Is this correct or no? Anyone? Yes. Yeah, this is correct. Let's find out fxx. So again, it is this region. This is the region where the density for, uh, so fxx is joint density for, for fxy. We should integrate out y. So remember for a particular, what is the range on x? In this problem, what is the range on x? Just a, x itself, anyone? Look at the x variable, where is it non-zero? Hello, look at the x-axis. Where is the non-zero? So x goes from where to where? Maximum value, x will be non-zero from where to where? Why is this so hard? Remember, the joint density function is non-zero here. So x, certainly if x equal to 2, it is zero. So where is it non-zero? From zero. zero to That's easy. And so you pick an x somewhere here in the in that region. Then what we want is the value uh, range on y. If x is here, what is the range on y for integration? Look at the picture. If x is if x is here, y goes from where to where? From zero x to zero. X. Zero to x, right? Now it's easy to do because this is three x. So this is three x multiplied by y. So that becomes three x squared zero to two, zero to one. So that's the density function. You can quickly check area under the density function is of course one, because zero to one. So if you integrate, this will become s cubed by three zero to one. So this checks. Okay. Let's do f y y. So this is f x y, x comma y, d x. So what? First of all, what's the range on y? Anybody? Zero to? Zero to pi? Zero to one, right. Once again, because you can see that's the maximum range. 
and uh, so you fix y somewhere so what's the what's the uh, what's the range uh, what's the limits on x y to y so this week this remember this is 3x so this is x uh, what was it 3x so this will become 3x squared by 2 right 1 to y so that will become 3 by 2 yeah 1 minus y squared right right all right, so I'm going to leave it to you to check it whether it's correct or not. So, if you multiply this with this, do you get the original uh, uh, joint density function? Remember, if you take the product of this and this, you don't get 3x. So, you conclude that in this case, the random variables are dependent or independent? Not independent, right? Or you can call them dependent if you want. So, xy not independent. So let's look at, uh, let me give you another example, jointly Gaussian. Then the, the joint density function has this form. So this is of course in the numerator. So notice there are three terms. And compared to that, if you remember, fxx is this symbol form. So this is very similar to that, but a little more. Uh, and uh, what, you, uh, what, I'm, what you, I'm going to suggest is you go home. It's very easy. You take this expression, try to uh, integrate out why you should get this expression at the bottom. And uh, on the for top expression, you integrate out x, you should get the bottom expression for uh, y. So you may say, why this complicated? You'll see. So if you notice here, there are how many parameters are here? Look at here. Let's count them. Two, uh, so from here, we know these are the mean of uh, the uh, x random variable. This must be the mean of the y random variable mu x mu y this is the variance of x this is the variance of y but what we see a new parameter rho so we'll come to that maybe next class or something that's all the difference otherwise there is no and uh, this is valid for rho between minus one and plus one what is rho will come as i said in a week or something so it has got to five parameters mu x to mu y sigma x squared sigma y squared and then rho so to, uh, the two joint random variables what is rho as i said will come in a, a minute uh, x and y are said to be jointly gaussian if it has this form so i'm going to give you a ex, uh, exercise which uh, we'll put it 
So let me ask you to simplify this. All right, so I have five parameters. I mean, so a, I have a quadratic here. AX squared plus BY squared plus CX plus DF plus uh, FY plus G. I want you to go home and rewrite like this. I wanted to find out these five parameters. In other words, so what? Do, so if you do that, you will show that any quadratic on top of the e to the power represents a Gauss, two jointly Gaussian random variables. So your job is to match each to the other one. So you you know how to complete the square, right? A x squared, uh, then you pull c x, uh, so that will be a x minus c over a the uh, squared, etc. So uh, do some work, right? So I want you to rewrite it in this fashion, and that way you can identify all the So it takes a little bit doing so both are the same it's just two ways of expressing So see whether you can uh, this constant whatever is this messy constant is taken care by that g here because e to the power minus g will uh, come and uh, should uh, take care of this constant right so all those a b c d e f g are not independent they have some relation so see whether you can simplify one to the other so wh what if it is the mean so these are the means what if the mean is zero let me rewrite that expression. It's a little easier. Uh, so if x is x and y are zero mean, and variance of sigma x squared, sigma y squared, and rho, then the joint density function would look like this. Outside a constant, don't worry about it. This is one over one minus rho squared. Then you have x squared over sigma x squared minus two rho x y over sigma x sigma y plus y squared over sigma y squared and this is important so you should play around with the joint density function because a lot of times two gaussian random variables come up so you should if you integrate out y here i think i have done it all in my video so you should if you can't do it just check there If you, of course, you'll get the marginal density function of x. You see, so I it's see whether you can go from here to here. Because there are only three parameters in both the cases: sigma x, sigma y, rho. Here I have three parameters: a, b, c and the area under both should be one that will fix k see whether you can get uh, sigma x sigma y from a b c that's an easier problem so what's the here we know this is the variance but what's the variance in terms of a b c of course it's uh, screaming at you right because look uh, this constant multiplied sigma x squared is one over a so this constant multiplied by sigma y squared is uh, uh, 1 over b. 
from that you can uh, you can get the relations let me leave it to you any questions so to see whether you can do it from abc so any quadratic like that immediately represents a gaussian because it's one and the same and if you have x and y terms that's just uh, with the mean that's all. here means are zero all right now i i go to the main topic of this uh, course so remaining lecture and the entire next lecture we will be solving problems and if you fail here you fail here so all of you on the zoom you have a lot of work to do in the next two weeks so this is going to differentiate who gets a who gets b who gets c etc we are going to so so far we were on small roads now we are going to enter the highway so you are not going to solve the problems without practicing them that's the first thing i want to say and good thing is i have hundreds of problems already solved and on my youtube so initially you may want to look at them see how things are done then the same problem you try to solve them there are many problems solved in all the books i have given you including the textbook and my lecture notes so what is the problem this is the and this comes in communication signal processing etc so we are going to this two uh, big topic of functions of two random variables so we we may have we will have two types of problems so let me do the one function of two random variables first so i hope you understood the problem right so so what am i trying to the simplest problem that comes up in uh, signal plus noise if i know the density signal is independent of noise so the join density function is the product of the density functions so if i make if signal and noise gets mixed up you get a signal what is the density function of that signal so let me write down the problem so we are given the joint density function of x and y as i said if x and y are independent this is the product and if you are given a function z equal to uh, the two function of two random variables i gave you several examples find uh, fcc so this is what i'm going to do today so by the time you come back next week in this class i expect you to do you obviously i want you to finish the homework and also uh, see how many uh, go through all the problems i have solved i'm not asking you to solve anything just look at the problems on the youtube that i have solved on this one this is a big topic this is there is no end to this <clears throat> so i'll be making up a little bit uh, so 
you can make up all sorts of problems like tan inverse y over x uh, these are nonlinear functions the, this is the magnitude this is the phase of two random waves some difference ratio all sorts of stuff all this comes up in one way or the other way and the second problem which we'll do a little more detail next week is if again given gxy i mean given fx the joint density function and i give you two functions g of uh, z is x g of xy and w is another function of x and y obviously find the joint density function of the new random variables and of course you have to two new random variables you can ask them are they independent etc so one at a time let's concentrate on the first problem that's one function of two random variables so just take a second to understand the problem the theory is very simple extremely simple so if i am given uh, z equal to g of x y so remember one random variable and of course we are given the joint density function this is given so i am going to start with the distribution function of z that's by definition z less than or equal to z this is by definition z is given to be g x y less than or equal to z so you can say this is uh, say this is the region where g x y is less than or equal to c so you need to find out so this is your first step in the two dimension find out the region where the and then as i said before remember we had gone through this so i can divide, i can do this into small regions uh, the probability that the random variable is in each small region is just the density function multiplied by dx dy then i sum it up so you can see that this is going to be nothing but the joint density function of x and y evaluated only over that region where gxy is less than or equal to c and once somehow you find the uh, distribution function then you take the derivative of the distribution function to get the density function so these are so i wrote down the three steps so you will say oh this is easy let's see how easy this is okay so theory is quite simple so everybody understood the theory right so we are i'm going to the best way to illustrate this is i'm just going to solve few problems then you ho go home and solve many more problems and then the next quiz will be something based on this so the classic problem is uh, noisy signal signal plus noise so generally signal and noise are independent so the joint density function of xy is fxx multiplied by fyy so the question is uh, what's the density function of the uh, combined signal that you receive then uh, depending on the density function we will decide how to process it so let's look at this problem uh, z uh, this is also done in detail in the book 
So if z, c is probability of z less than or equal to z, but z is given to be x plus y less than or equal to z. So remember, if you look at the previous instruction, I just need uh, number one step is to figure out that region where this inequality is satisfied. So let's go to region and uh, where oh, x plus y equal to z is a line. How will the line go? Anyone? How will the line look like? This is this is y. Where is the intercept? Anybody? It's a line. So how? What is the slope of the line? How does it go? When x equal to zero, what is uh, the uh, y? Z. When y is zero, what is uh, x? Z. So you have z here, z here. So the line will go like this, right? So this is the line x plus. This is your first job to figure out where this region is. So if you fail here, you are not going to do anything. And now where is this region? X plus Y less than or equal to C is where? Anybody? You have the line. To the left or to the right? Left. Yes. To the no. left. So you no. need to figure out. Origin. This is the region because you put x equal, you take this point zero. So if I assume z to be positive, if the obviously z is positive, so zero is less than c, so that's good. Right? So I just need to integrate it. I can take a horizontal strip or a vertical strip. So I can take a strip like this and integrate and then move the strip this way. So let me write it on top of it, then I'll write it on the next page also. So the, uh, here the variable is x. So I can write this as double integral fxy, x comma y. I'm going to look at here. The variable is dx. X is so. What is the limit limit on x? Look at this. X goes from where to where? Anyone? Minus infinity to z minus. All right. X goes from minus infinity to z minus y. And how and uh, how many how many such strips are there all the way from here to there? So y goes from minus infinity to infinity. All right. So in general, minus infinity to plus infinity is correct. So let me copy this to the next page. Just I'm only going to copy the expression. So we have FCC is you could have taken a vertical strip also. So I took a horizontal strip. So x goes from minus infinity to c minus y, and y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we want derivative. So we want the derivative of this quantity. And this is where you need a new formula. Look at here. You need the derivative of uh, the inside is easy because you have minus infinity to plus infinity. Then you have derivative, but this is not easy because the, the limits are the variable is sitting in the limit. So I'm going to concentrate on this, how to do this. So let me give you a formula and then uh, uh, this is a very useful formula. So I'm going to So this is your situation. You have, I put uh, the Z everywhere. So I want the derivative of, uh, with respect to Z. So this is what we want to use. Why is this? Because look here, we have derivative here. I mean, we have Z sitting there. Uh, our uh, lower limit is zero. I mean, constant. There is no C here, but let's look at this. Let me give you this formula. And we will be using this. Uh, you should derive this formula. I think this is Leibniz rule. how to take the derivative when the variable is also in the limit. So the way uh, uh, I, I have some derived sheets, I'll give it to you, but let me just uh, give you the formula. The derivative of the top limit, b prime z, and whatever is the variable of integration here, 
you substitute the value so it's going to be h of b z comma z minus the derivative of the bottom limit and again the variable of integration you put uh, uh, the bottom limit bottom limit goes here and the third term is you, what you would do anyway which is just the derivative of the inside quantity with respect to z of course if there is no z then you don't have to do anything so three terms this is a very useful formula a lot of problems that i am going to give you will need this this is not the only way to do it this is just a convenient way but somehow you need to take the derivative of so i hope you understood mentally try to understand you can go home and try to use your calculus to derive this it's a very simple derivation use the areas one at a time and so on change bc to bc plus delta c and use uh, right you rewrite this as bc plus delta c but rewrite it as b prime c multiplied by the delta c plus bc etc so let's use this formula here so look at here i am just going to we have one integral here minus infinity plus infinity derivative derivative of the top limit did someone say something what all right what is the derivative of the top limit with respect to z hello one and then what is the variable here a variable of integration remember the outside one what is the variable of integration for this inside what's the variable of integration anyone what are we integrating the variable with respect to the outside one is y so the inside one is x so at x we will replace uh, z minus y the minus the derivative of the top uh, bottom limit what's the derivative of the bottom limit it's a constant zero and then the uh, the third term is derivative of this term with respect to z what is that third term hello the derivative of this look at here you need the derivative of this quantity with respect to z there is no z here so that term is zero so you just get a dy so you get this is the, simply the answer minus infinity plus infinity fx y z minus y comma y dy so that's the density function of z and what happens if x and y are in this is remember general case <coughs> now let me assume x and y are independent look at the previous formula it is the same formula of course it will split up fx of z minus y multiplied by fy y dy anybody knows this operation what is this operation signal processing convolution if you know convolution that's the convolution operation convolution of the two density functions so we have a theorem what is the theorem if x and y are independent and z equal to x plus y uh, then the density function of their sum is given by the convolution of the density functions i will write it here if x and y are independent uh, then the pdf so remember the pdf of the sum is not the sum of the pdfs i have seen all sorts of silly stuff being written what we have derived is if x and y are independent then the pdf of the sum is uh, the given by the convolution of 
the marginal PDFs. Marginal PDF means uh, X and Y. So let's do the same problem, but uh, so I'm taking a special case of this. The joint density function is given to be non-zero only here. The joint density function is zero if x is less than zero or y is less than zero. So everywhere else the joint density function is zero. Let's do this problem one more time quickly so once again fcc is uh, probability of x plus y less than or equal to z z less than z so x plus y is this line now now where are we integrating in this case integrating over what x plus y less than z is where is the region of integration so only here because it's, there is nothing to integrate here, it's zero. So I can take a strip like this, integrate. So this will be double integral, fxy, x comma y. Let's say I'm going to integrate x first, y then. X goes from where to where? Anybody? Not minus infinity, zero to? What? Yeah, because this line is x plus y equal to z. So this is z minus y. And y goes from where to where? Previously, we wrote y goes from zero uh, minus infinity to plus infinity. We are only integrating this rectangle. So y goes from here to, what is this point? To z. So y goes from zero to z. So let me do the derivative of this with respect to z. I'm going to do this mentally. Instead of writing this, watch me. So you have, uh, I'm going to do this one at a time. Let's do this inside. So let's do the outside one first. What's the derivative of z? One, right? And remember here the variable of integration is y. So wherever you see y, I am going to substitute the top limit. Then this will become zero to zero. So there is no contribution. Then there is uh, the derivative of this. I hope you saw what I said, right? Because there is y here, but there is also y. This is z minus y. So this integral will become zero to zero. One multiplied by zero is zero. Uh, so there is no contribution from the second one. So only the third one, which is y equal to zero to z, then I should take the derivative with respect to z of this integral, x equal to zero, z minus y, fx y, x comma y, dx dy. This we did before. This will turn out to be fx y z minus uh, y, right? Because the derivative of the top limit. So anyway, the answer will turn out to be zero to z fx y z minus y comma y dy. So you see, there, there is nothing. You cannot do it one problem and just run away. I, if I change something, it will be a you just have to solve each problem separately. So this is a case. Uh, so let me take X and Y to be independent uh, exponentials to match this problem. Exponential is when X is positive, Y is positive. So I'm going to do a, a, a sub example, 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 example. All these examples are within the first problem. So X is exponential with parameter Lambda y is exponential with parameter lambda x and y are independent z is x plus y so that just uh, because then uh, the density function is here we don't have to go through this we can just use the last formula right it just fits in here this is the case that we just did i'm, I'm going to plug into this formula so here fxy is 
fxx multiplied by fyy. So that's the lambda e raised to minus lambda x multiplied by lambda e raised to minus lambda y. So fcc from the previous formula that you have zero to c fxy. What was it? Z minus y comma y dy. So this is lambda squared goes outside zero to c e raised to minus lambda z minus y e raised to minus lambda y. So lambda y cancels e raised to minus lambda c goes outside dy. So I hope you see that. Uh, and of course, if x is positive, y is positive, the sum is positive. Uh, so that's the result. And this is, uh, everybody recognizes this density function? What is this density function? That's gamma, gamma density function. So if you add independent exponentials, we just showed that you get gamma with uh, whatever parameter you have, lambda comma two. So this is uh, gamma. Uh, you add one more exponential, you will get a th gamma comma three, uh, lambda comma three, etc. So independent exponentials, if you add, you get gamma. That's what the theorem is. But remember, to get here, we had to go through a lot of stuff. So there may be a problem in the next quiz on something like this. I may give you a region where the density function is non-zero. This is where fxy is non-zero. There are problems like this. I have a problem in mind, and these problems are solved in my YouTube. I just go, want you to go and hunt it and uh, solve, etc. And then let's say z equal to x plus y, or a, a x over y, or x minus y. All these are done there, finding the density function of z. So let me do x minus y and x over y. Any questions? Remember, everything I do here is uh, almost all the same problems. Or, or this is this is such a classic problem. Every book has it. My book has it. My notes have it. There are, I think, three or four videos on X plus Y by me, and one video has got uh, what over fifty or sixty thousand. Uh, uh, clicks and so on, right? Oh, I mean, at the very least, you should know x plus y, sum of signal plus noise, what happens, the PDF. So let's look at the next problem. So again, the problem is x minus y. We are given the joint density function. Yeah, joint density function is given. Question is, what is FCC? So I'll start with the distribution function. There is no, everything is physical. You start from the fundamental steps. Okay. This is by definition probability of z less than or equal to z. But z is given to be x minus y. So this is given to be x minus y less than or equal to z. So you immediately go to the x domain and y domain, draw the region where this is uh, true. How does this line go? Anyone? How does this line go? What happens if x equal to, so take the line x minus y equal to z. When x is zero, y is what? Let's say z is minus z. Minus z, so it's somewhere here. And when y is zero, x is? Uh, z. All right, so it is this line. Right? So this is z. So this is x minus y equal to c. Where is this region, x minus y less than or equal to z? Anybody? Uh, on top of the line. Yeah, to the left. This one you mean, right? Yeah. All right, so we need to integrate over there. So as before, I'm going to take a strip from minus infinity up to this point. Then I'll push this strip up and uh, all the way. So. 
f x y x comma y x goes from where to where minus infinity to anybody x goes up z to z minus y z plus uh, z plus y and y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity all right let's take the derivative of this i'm going to do this quickly so the uh, outside limits are okay because it's constant limit you just need to take the derivative of this inside the quantity so derivative of the top limit with respect to z what do you get what and what is the remember look at the variable of integration the variable here is uh, the inside integral is with respect to x so wherever you see x 1 multiplied by uh, you substitute z plus y comma y minus the derivative with respect to the bottom limit bottom limit is a constant so that's zero no contribution derivative of the inside quantity with respect to z again i don't see any c there so this is the answer easy so i'll put it here so we have if z is x minus y you can write f z z to be minus infinity plus infinity f x y z plus y comma y if you uh, say again it's all in the details so if you want you can do the previous problem and to see how uh, so let's do the previous problem because it's a little interesting there are little more details there so the problem is the density it's let's say x and y are uh, x is non zero so this is a different problem remember problem within problem so what can you say if x is positive y is positive x plus y is always x is positive y is positive x plus y will be positive how about x minus y x plus y is what anyone x is positive y is positive what can you say about x minus y and so it can take both positive and negative values you see that so you see here even if x is positive y is positive we need to consider two cases we need to consider z positive and z negative z positive remember if c c is probability of z less than or equal to z which is probability of x minus y less than or equal to c so the question is where is this line i'll draw these two cases so then we'll do them separately so the density function is here if z is positive the line will look like what anyone we went through this the line will be like this right if z is negative how will this line look like anyone uh, no big deal you put x equal to uh, uh, x equal to 0 minus y equal to minus z y is minus z so the line will just push up so this is the same line x minus y equal to z z negative here z positive i'm let me do it in the next page so you can clearly see so if c c is probability of x minus y less than or equal to z so the whole point is even if x is positive and y is positive uh, z can go from minus in c can be positive and negative so i'm going to do the two cases so this is z positive and this is z negative and remember the density function is only in this region so where do we integrate anybody in case one where do we integrate remember this is inequality where you integrate where is it uh, x minus this is the line x minus y equal to z positive this is the line x minus y equal to z negative so we need the region x minus y less than or equal to z where is that in this case where is that region so it's this in this case where is that region this region x minus y less than or equal to z 
so don't carelessly integrate all over right so that's what i'm so each problem you do need to once you identify this it's almost over so the problem and this you do it by so i'm just going to write it down you can sort of track me so fcc is going to be so i'm going to integrate like this and then integrate so you see whether two cases right so x goes from 0 to x goes from 0 to y plus z and y goes from y goes from this region 0 to infinity yeah not minus infinity that was the whole point fx y x comma y dx dy this is for z uh this is for z positive and the other case would be this case i'm going to <coughs> so here x goes from same before 0 to y z plus y and y goes from minus z to infinity <coughs> very good minus z to infinity not 0 to infinity so if you blindly just to use this uh, so let me to do the derivative of that i am just going going to do it then you check it at home whether this is true so you just apply the formula twice so there's nothing to apply here this will be y this is ec and this is for z positive and here it will be minus z to infinity remember z is negative and so here uh, of course you have to go through these two steps take the derivative derivative of the top limit zero minus the derivative of the bottom limit minus 1 then when you substitute minus z wherever remember this integral is wherever y is there this will become 0 to 0 so no contribution then you go and redo it so this will come out to be do it for the inside integral now if you want you go home and i don't have time to simplify this you go home and simplify uh do the previous problem x and y are independent uh, uh, exp you plug it in here what do we get maybe we can do it quickly so if you do this uh, fcc i'll do this myself and then you do it so this is lambda squared e raised to minus what happened i made a mistake somewhere yeah i am not uh, i mean everything is good if you plug this here x is going to be y plus z so this is e raised to minus 2y no so and this is going to be 0 to minus z to infinity lambda squared e raised to minus yang you know watch me see whether i am making mistakes so i want you to solve it at home let's see and uh, e raised to minus 2y over minus 2 0 to infinity that's one right and this is lambda square e raised to minus lambda c same thing oh this is a minus what was the answer there minus c here right so this would turn out to be lambda squared uh, by 2 e raised to minus lambda c if this is positive 
and this will be half e raised lambda squared e raised to minus lambda c here the top limit is zero bottom limit is uh, plus uh, 2c minus 2c this will become plus 4c negative so if you do this so if you want you can write it in one word this is so this is the complete answer the density function looks like this this is maxwell i think this is the pdf so i did few steps mentally but i believe i am right but make sure you go home and make sure everything is good Any questions? No. Any questions? Anyone? So let's look at this problem. This was one of the quiz from last year. What is the question? What is what? Huh? What is what? Read me the question. What is? A priori? Yeah, I'll come to that. We have, uh, oh, in the. So let me give you a problem from, uh, to give you an idea how the quiz next week will look like. So where is this region? X is greater than Y is greater than zero. Where is this region? Anybody? X is greater than Y. Where is X equal to Y? All right. So where is the region X greater than Y? All right. So your first job is, and remember everything, both are positive. So where is this density function non-zero? Anybody? So that, this is your first job, to figure out where the density function is non-zero. So every problem, density function is not all over. It's a, this problem. All right, so, so this, was, uh, this could be the next, uh, next week quiz. So the question is, find the PDF of Z. You want me to do it, or you want to do it yourself? So let me maybe give you ideas, right? We'll see how, or maybe we can solve it together. So we'll start with FCC, probability of Z less than or equal to. Uh, so first of all, again, before you jump, uh, what, what about Z? What can you say about Z uh, given the problem? Z is X minus Y. So Z would be taking what sorts of values here? Because X is greater than Y, we know Z is positive. So the first observation is Z only takes positive values. And uh, so Z is less than or equal to small Z, but Z is given to be X minus Y less than or equal to C. So everybody, all the 60 students in the class need to concentrate on problems like this, because I don't want to fail anyone. And you need to put in the work. 
I mean, this was a quiz. I'm just uh, showing you how you would do it. And now what? So now you need to identify x minus y is less than or equal to c. Where will be that line x minus y equal to c? Anyone? C is positive. So where will be that line? So take again y equal to zero, x will be? X is z, so it's somewhere here. And when y is, x is zero, y is? Minus z. Minus z, z is positive. Remember, z is positive. So it will be something like this. Right? So this is the line x minus y equal to c. So where is the region that you are going to integrate? Anyone? Very good, between, right? So this is all you need to identify. I'm going to leave it to you to indicate how to integrate over the strips. So this will be integration. Anybody quickly, what, what will be the limits on X? What will be the limits on Y if I integrate X first? Anyone? X goes from? Y to Y plus Z. Y to Y plus Z. And Y goes from? X. All right, so do this and you'll get the answer to be uh, this one. See whether you get the answer ultimately. What is this density function? If everything is done, you'll get this answer. What is this density function? The last one. I want you to go home and complete it. I haven't given you all the steps. But this is the difficult part. All this you have to do in a quiz. Some problems like this. The whole idea is to get you all very quickly to solve problems like this. So this is not going to happen without you working, okay? What is this density function, the last one? You have seen this? Exponential. With the parameter? One. Very good, so that's what. So again, you have a theorem if you want. So things can prop up completely different ways. You know, depending on the problem, suddenly an exponential is popping out. <laughs> so let's look at this one. Next is the ratio. Let's... Again, all this I have done multiple problems and some of these problems are uh, uh, done in with the different density functions on different regions etc so the joint density function of x and y are given question is what is the density function of z so the same problem so we start with fcc it begins to look boring so that's the probability of z less than or equal to z. But z is, look at here, z is given to be x over y. So that's the probability of x over y less than or equal to z. So anybody, uh, how will this line look like x over y? So that, uh, when can you bring in the y here? Because if I want to write it as a, this division, when can I multiply by y on both the sides? Anyone? Can I bring this y here? That's what I'm asking. When y is positive, we can bring it. Uh, the inequality will stay the same. When y is negative, what happens? Inequality will change. So how do we take care of this? This is the way we take care of this. Let me call this whole thing to be A. So this is probability of A. This, this technique we'll use again and again. See, A intersection S is what? Anybody? A intersection S. A, so there's no change, right? Remember, A is this whole mess. But S, I am going to write it as
like this. Why greater than zero and why less than zero? Of course, it's whole, a whole, re, a whole S, right? So I'm going to write FCC. I'll write it in the next page. Intersection with y, y positive or y negative. So remember, this is the same as probability of A intersection with B union B bar. This, of course, I can write it as PAB union AB bar using probability A multiplied by B, A multiplied by B. But these two are mutually exclusive. So I can write this as PAB plus P A B bar. This means now if I substitute, this is X over Y, A is X over Y less than Z, B is Y positive, plus X over Y less than Z, Y negative. You may say, why am I doing this? See, now it is easy. If Y is positive, the first step can be written as Y Z, Y positive. And this becomes what happens here? If Y is negative, what happens to this inequality? It flips. So this becomes, you look at the two inequalities. One case, it got flipped. Now you just draw the region here. I'll draw the region here. And then we'll add up these two regions. So very quickly, Y is positive is above the X axis, right? Y is positive is here. Y is negative is here. So what is this region? X, X equal to YZ. How will that go? X equal to YZ. X equal to Y is where? X equal to Y is what? A line. X equal to YZ would be the same line with a different slope, right? It's not curved, etc. So X equal to YZ would be a line here. But what is the region? X less than YZ and Y positive. What will be that region? Look there. It will be this region, isn't it? All this. Yes. That is the, uh, so that this is this integral. Y equal to zero, you don't have to worry because y, uh, uh, y equal to zero will be, uh, so in this case, Y cannot be zero because then the, uh, uh, the the ratio blows up. So the implicit assumption is the two density function should be such that y is not zero. Or probability of y equal to zero is zero. And in the bottom region, look, y less than zero. And again, it's the same line. So this line is x equal to yz, x equal to yz. And where is this region? x greater than x greater than yz. Anybody? It will be this region. Right? x is greater than yz here, but below. So let me put it together. It's a sum. <clears throat> so the region you need to integrate is this much. So fcc would be the sum of two integrals. So someone quickly, let's do integrate on x axis. X goes from minus infinity to what point? This line is x equal to yz. Anybody? Up to yz, right? And this goes from minus infinity to zero. I'm sorry. Zero to plus infinity, right? And here the bottom region is here. I'm integrating here. So x goes from yz to plus infinity and minus infinity to zero. So let me take the derivative. So here you have zero to infinity. The derivative of this with respect to z is y. Then you replace uh, the first integral is with respect to x. So replace x by y z.
and the derivative of the bottom limit no contribution so it is just this and the derivative of the top inside quantity nothing here when you come the the so the derivative of the top limit is zero derivative of the bottom limit is y but with a minus sign so this is minus y then uh, substitute this is dx dy so this will be fx y y z comma y dy so that's the answer please go home and verify that I, so i can combine these two if you want look here uh, in this region y is positive here when y is negative minus y is positive so if you want i can write this as minus infinity to plus infinity absolute value of y fx y y z comma y d y as the answer so before i complete this let me just continue the same problem with uh, so let's say x and y are uh, independent zero mean gaussian with uh, variance of sigma x squared and sigma y squared so i am going to uh, uh, the question is what is the density function of uh, the ratio of two gaussian random variables so i'm going to use this last formula i'll copy the formula here if you have fx y y z comma y dy so i'm going to do this for you uh, absolute value of y here you have a square root of 2 pi sigma and let me by uh, just to make it easy i'm going to make this uh, sigma x squared equal to sigma y squared both equal so this is just sigma x squared e to the power minus i remember they are independent so 2 sigma squared then x squared instead of x squared i am going to put y z y squared z squared over sigma squared plus y squared right the second variable dy so notice that uh, c squared goes outside y squared goes outside so this is minus infinity to plus infinity this is an even function this is an even function so first i can write this as in this manner zero to infinity i made it one side then i only need y i don't need absolute value or uh, absolute value is fine this is e raised to minus y squared goes outside 1 plus z squared over 2 sigma squared dy i'm going to call this whole thing to be u so u is y squared multiplied by 1 plus z squared over 2 sigma squared so du is 2y dy 2 2 cancels so dy is sigma squared du over 1 plus z squared so let me substitute into this formula here also 2 2 cancels so it's a famous result let's see whether i get it right so sigma squared remember this integral is from 0 to infinity so i don't need absolute value here so this i can replace it by y so y dy so here you have y dy so y dy is something so so when y is 0 u is 0 when y is infinity u is infinity here you have y dy y dy is this quantity sigma squared over 1 plus z squared du and then you have e raised to minus u so sigma squared cancels 1 plus z squared goes outside 
e raised to minus u du is one in if we integrate so the answer turns out to be z goes from minus infinity to plus infinity if x and y are gaussian and that is cauchy so this is a cauchy density function with parameter 1 if i used to different variances it will be cauchy with parameter alpha so again you have a theorem if x and y are zero mean gaussian independent random variables then the ratio is cauchy but the ratio is also cauchy even if they are dependent but you need to do it you take the joint density function go through this you will again get cauchy except you will get some alpha squared here and alpha here I believe Z also gets shifted Cauchy. So this is the way it goes. So next week, uh, do lots of problems because I'm going to ask, not too hard, but I'll ask something reasonable to see whether there will be two problems of this type in the mini test. So the mini tests are going to if you come without preparation, just listening to me and copying the homework, you will not be able to do it. That much I can tell you. So please, uh, the whole idea is for you to <coughs> work, each of you. Remember, you, you asked for this course, so I'm going to give it to you. And uh, remember, we only have two months, so you just need to put in the time. <coughs> 